Yeah, I, I, I mentioned a lab origin, you know, on my blog, I think a possible lab origin in March of 2020, if not before. Yeah. Um, that seemed like the most likely um, source of it. Um, I Where are you at with that now? Like now that here we are four years later. There, there's no, look, there's a lot of people who don't, aren't fully cognizant of the facts who will argue or who are playing you, who will argue A, that there's no virus or B, that it wasn't a, a lab leak. That's just a possibility. Well, maybe it wasn't a lab leak. You know, maybe it was deliberate. That's one mm -hmm. thing you have to consider. But the other thing is you just look at the genome. There are so many thing, different things that have been changed. There's at least a dozen things in that genome that are very odd and that cause, um, specific uh, medical problems. So there are things in that genome that are there to impact your immune system, you know, and make it harder for you to fight off the infection. Mm -hmm. there, people knew when they created the vaccine, for instance, that the spike was very toxic. Why would you take the most toxic part of this virus and make a vaccine out of that part? You, you'd, right. have, you'd need to to decrease the toxicity before you made the vaccine, but they didn't. Um, there were When Fauci had his phone call on February 1 with about a dozen virologists, um, it was mentioned that there were six different weird things in the genome. So on February 1, February 1, 2020, mm -hmm. um, these uh, spooky virologists um, who, had, who have worked on biological warfare issues before as well as other things, um, were aware of six things in the genome that had probably been uh, added in a laboratory. And we've discovered more since then. So if you actually, and I'm not a geneticist, I'm not a virologist, but I, you know, I can read. If you acknowledge that to be true, and it's been very well documented, there's no question but that this was designed in a lab and I'd posit that there's a good chance that different parts of it were designed in different labs and then those parts were put together. Mm -hmm. And um, since Ralph Barrick and Xi Jing Li were sharing um, their, the mouse, the humanized mouse model, they were sharing other things, um, it's certainly possible that bits from both labs and there are other labs around the world. I mean, there are coronavirus labs in Australia, in uh, Singapore and Taiwan, you know, and in Europe, I mean, they're all over. So other ones in the United States as well. So there are many possibilities from where it could have come from. Mm. And in my mind, so, so we know it's, it's been created in a lab. Did it leak or was it deliberately spread? And people say at first, well, it had to have been the Wuhan lab because that's where it showed up. But me, having a background in biological warfare, can tell you that you always are going to pick an organism so that it appears to be natural. So you're going to, if you want to spread it, you spread it in a place where the would have, where the lab leak would appear, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you, if if you are able, you use a strain that looks like a natural strain. But the people who made this were looking for a highly highly virulent organism, and uh, so they couldn't make it look natural. They must have known that once scientists really got a hold of it, um, they'd figure out, you know, all these. Do you things. think so? I, I mean, this is just like complete speculation, I suppose. But do you think that it was, if it was a biological weapon, do you think that it was the Chinese who created it to use it on everybody else, or do you think it was maybe we created it in our labs and used it against China in order to get after China? So there's no way of knowing that. Mm. What I can say is that even though we have a biological weapons convention, it was never uh, made to be enforceable. So when it was uh, negotiated between 1972 and 1975, the plan was that there would be conferences every five years and they would add an inspection regimen and provisions for punishments if a country um, made biological weapons. Those things were never added. 
the United States has, has been blocking them for several decades. And we know that countries cheat. We know Iraq cheated. Um, Judy Miller, in her book, Germs, um, revealed that the United States was doing three experiments that most scientists thought were cheating. Mm -hmm. um, so anyone could have, as I say, um, uh, you don't need a big, big facility. You know, you need a small, la you can have small private laboratories. Nobody in the U.S. government actually knows all the high containment labs that exist in the U.S. They don't need to be registered. <laughs> you can have a private BSL-3 or BSL-4 lab. You can do your own experiments in it. Or you can, the CIA can have their own lab and <sighs> no one knows about it. Wonderful. So really, it's really <laughs> critical for us to strengthen the, the treaty and to put limits on this. And in particular, because the WHO is... Uh, proposing two documents that will actually put gain of function research, which is another name for biological warfare research, it'll put it under the authority of the WHO. So the WHO likes gain of function research, wants to collect a library of biological warfare agents, and wants to supervise the research. And what we need to do is get rid of it, have inspections, prevent it from happening in every country. Do we need this type of research at all? According to Robert Redfield, he was asked in Congress, has gain-of-function research, and again, that means making a, a microorganism more virulent or more transmissible or both, and both mm -hmm. were done to COVID, um, has that ever led to a drug or vaccine or other therapeutic? And he said, no, it hasn't. That's, that's the excuse that's used to do it. Door to freedom.org. Is that where people can go to um, help in some way or get, or what, what can people yes. do? Thank you. Yes. So um, door to freedom.org is an organization I founded last year um, to put up, you couldn't even find copies of these documents very easily, the versions of the pandemic treaty and the international health regulation amendment. So we put up all the versions of them. We've analyzed them so you can read short analyses, long analyses, articles from my group, articles from other people, um, many short two-minute articles, takes two minutes to read, articles about all aspects of the Great Reset, because this is part of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, Agenda 2030, Great Reset. And um, we are putting up information about what you can do there. But also okay. we are a member of the Sovereignty Coalition um, and you can go to their website. I think it's sovereigntycoalition.org and they have a line act where you can call, uh, you know, you can go with a few clicks. You can send messages to all your elected representatives and do it that way. Plus we are, we have a model resolution. We're just about to roll it out. Like this weekend, we're rolling out more documents. So you can go to mm -hmm. either of those sites and find them. And then I have a Substack, merylnass.substack.com, where I post other things that may be of interest. All right. Well, all those links are down below. Dr. Meryl Nass, thank you so much for this conversation um, and for all of the information, really. Uh, and I wish you the best of luck in this. I mean, we need it. We need people like you fighting this. Um, and, uh, so, so thank you also for, for put, for putting up the fight. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. This thank was you. great. I appreciate your interest. Thank you.